history has a way of repeating itself. Unknown. That's a popular saying. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Depending on your time zone and when I'm able to upload this video. This is TV. We are global and social commentator. When we were about to make this video, we just had the news today that there have been another coup in Gabon. Ali Bonku has been, do I say dethroned? Because he has been there. His father was there. The father handed over to him and he has been there for, I think, over 60 years. So the military has carried out another coup. And this time around in Central Africa, Gabon. And what are they saying? That they have various reasons why they have embarked on the military coup, on the coup d'etat, because of bad leadership. And that has been one of the primarily reasons of most of the coups in Africa. The Burkina Faso, the Mali, and before now, the Niger. So we will have time to talk about this Gabon coup. But today, we just want to let you guys know that history has a lot, a, a way of repeating itself. That we, Africans, and especially Niger and Nigerians, they should be afraid of France. They should be afraid of Macron. They should be afraid of what France can do. You see, we are fully aware that Niger Republic gave France 48 hours for them to pack their baggages they are load out of Niger. A lot of people have called me and asked me, why won't the military junta in Niger go to the embassy, drag the ambassador and its crew out and deport them? Let me tell you why. If Niger is not careful, such an action could lead to war. Diplomatically speaking, the premises of all embassy in the world the premises of all embassy in the world is part of that embassy's property or land. For example, if America has an embassy in Nigeria, that space where American embassy is, is taken diplomatically as American soil, even though the embassy is in Nigeria. The same way where the French embassy is in Niger is taken as France. So, any attempt for the Niger government, the coup d'etat, the junta now, to go in, dragging the ambassador out or whoever is there, will be uh, the same crime as if they have gone to attack Paris. So, that is why they are very careful. And that is why you should know this. So, what has they done? They gave them 48 hours to vacate. In fact, the president, <laughs> Macron, has said, they are going nowhere. Oh, Why? Because we don't recognize. So what did they do? They cut off their lights, their water, their supply and everything. They are trying to smoke them out. Today is Saturday. So today is the other deadline that Niger has given uh, France. So what did they do? The junta, that's the, the government or the co plotters now. What they did was to strip the ambassador of his diplomatic rights. He does not have a diplomatic right now. He is just an, an just like you and I, an ordinary foreigner in Niger. But even that as it may be, the embassy, that space, is the France territory. So even if the man inside the embassy is a nobody, as he has been stripped up of his diplomatic right, uh, the junta. The coup plotters cannot still go into the embassy. It would mean the same thing as attacking France or Paris. So what are they saying? They said they are going to wait until their food so supply runs out. Their light runs out. And when it comes out, it will be arrested and deported as an immigrant that does not have a legal right to stay. They are very careful. And I think that's a good thing. Do you know why? Because France... If, I just want to let you guys know now, if there is a proverb that says that, if you see a snake and 
somebody that is wicked, that is desperate. First of all, forget about the snake and face that man that is desperate. That is how France is now. France is desperate. So it is very important that the Niger Republic keep an eye watch on France. Keep an eye watch on the ambassador. Keep an eye watch on the embassy. Keep an eye watch on the 1,200 military, French military that is on ground. It's very important. You know why? I will tell you why. Why you have to be afraid of France. French, the evil that French has done. Uh, where do we start from? Okay, let us see. France. Do you know that France also have a colonial influence in Vietnam? They do. They also have it in Cambodia. And they also have in a country called Laos. You know, and when these people revolted against the French government, that they don't want France, they want to be independent, they want to be a sovereign state. You know what France do? France imposed forced labor on them. Many were dragged out and tortured, especially the ring leaders, those who were agitating for this independence, sovereignty. They were tortured. And chemical weapons were also used. That is French. to tell you how ah. wicked. Chemical weapons were also used. Do you know that even in Algeria, France is also the colonial master for all Algeria. They did the same thing. Forced them to pay heavy tax. Forced them to be involved in labor. Torture those who were who they tag as enemy of the states and use chemical weapon. They also did it in Tunisia. Now let's come back to colony in Africa. Do you know that it is very important that I let you guys know this? Do you know that? In 1958, that was when most countries in Africa were agitating that they want to be free. France used the CEFA, the French franc, to subjugate, to tie these countries down. And they made sure that the French central bank was the central bank for all these West African countries that they colonize and they have to pay 50 percent tax you know what that means pay 50 percent tax so like what we were saying french when they wanted when the african countries were all shouting that they need freedom this is what they did they now call all the french speaking countries and said they want to do a referendum for them and what was the referendum <laughs> the referendum was what i would call the devil's treaty yes the devil's treaty and the referendum was either you choose you don't want to be independent or you choose you want to be independent with france acting giving you conditions in terms of your economic policies, there we are involved. So do you know that when a, 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 the, a, a country's might is determined by the economy? So when France is controlling your economy, even if you are politically independent, you're still not independent. This is exactly what they did in, in Coup d'Ivoire. Coup d'Ivoire is independent, but everything about Coup d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, has to do with France. Even if you have to make a phone call, it goes first to Paris before it comes back to who you want to call in Côte d'Ivoire. So, when they set up this referendum for the colony, either you said, no, you don't want a referendum, you want France to continue, or yes, the referendum is yes, we want France to continue, but we want France to also still be the political and economic center of the country. So, in other words, it is like, no independence is and a country that Niger should watch out for. Because now they are desperate. They are fed with ECOWAS. ECOWAS wanted to really go and invade a military intervention. But because of some certain things that is going on, 
ECOWAS don't want to see themselves like the aggressor, as if they have not negotiated before the military action. So that was why they went to negotiate. And according to what the junta said, they are ready to leave. They didn't come for to be the ruling or the core, the 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 cabinet. No, they only came and they needed three years to be able to arrange everything and put the country on a democratic line again so it looks as if some countries are buying to their excuse and france is angry with that so france has called america and nato nato that they should get involved so but it's difficult for this eu nato and america to just get involved in another mass sovereign land uh, to just carry their military and invade they are also afraid because there are some african countries that is opposed so this is going to be a very difficult decision and that is why the eu and nato are a little bit skeptical but france now is angry with nato but why should nato attack niger when niger has not attacked any member of nato because according to the nato law any member that is at war others will have to join this is where the nigerians the junta have to be very careful and this is why france is telling them that they are not moving their embassy they want to provoke the junta the niger government to do some drastic action against the diplomat against the embassy so that they will say we have been attacked so this is an opportunity for us to fight back and don't forget they have about 8200 military personnel in Egypt. Everywhere they go in Africa, they always put their base there. Why? Because they use this base to to mani manipulate the government in power. They will come that they are fighting terrorists. That these people are there for peace. And in most cases, they are the or originators of these terrorists. For example, we've heard that they have gone to support a terrorist group in Niger, they want that group to fight against the government, to destabilize the country. They want that group to destabilize the country. So that when there is chaos, they now go in. Exactly what NATO, EU did with Gaddafi. They painted Gaddafi black. The people, stupidly, the Gaddafi, the Libyans, they set up missionaries, set up mercenaries to form groups to begin to attack Gaddafi and at the end of the day they were able to drag Gaddafi down but I tell you today the average Libyan man anywhere he sees the picture of Gaddafi he goes there and kiss Gaddafi they have realized that they made a very big mistake and that mistake was orchestrated by the West and that is exactly what we think they want to do with Niger they are just looking for opportunity and that is why we are making this video that Niger should be very careful. They have to be very patient, just as what they are doing now. Smoke them out. Even if it takes them one month for them to come out, then arrest them and deport them. They will be deported outside the embassy, which means that the Niger government did not enter Paris, for example. They did not enter France because the embassy, like we said before, is diplomatically representing the territory of French, even though it is in Niger. So that is why we are making this video. Uh, you see, the most deadly country that is opposed to the growth of Africa is French because of their vested interests, because they have no resources without the Africa countries. Like I said in my previous video, France is the fourth largest producer of gold. And France has no one gold mine. Not one. Then how? You know, so I just want to end this video here. The reason why we are making this video, we a lot of people will call us, talk on this issue, talk on this issue. Fine, we all we like to talk on current issues here, but we we are mostly interested in letting you know the news behind the news that's why we are 
any TV. We are global and social commentators. We'll let you know the news behind the news. Why things are unfolding. And we project, we'll tell you what is to come. Many people are saying now that the next country that a military coup will likely take place is Cameroon. Because <laughs> the Cameroonians, the people, are tired. But anyway, let's keep our fingers crossed. Like the saying go, history has a way of repeating itself. So this is Imi TV. We are global and social commentator. So if it's the first time you're coming across our video, we'll ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment. After you subscribe, just press the notification bell button so that each time we upload video, it comes directly to you. And for our returning subscribers, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, but God love you most. And so, like we said before, we will catch you when we make the next video. Until then, we say jokes. Adios. Au revoir. Ciao. Hasta la vista. Thank you.